It doesn't matter how much money you make, if you don't have a budget, you will never be financially free. Hey guys, this is Brett. Thanks for joining me. This is my channel where we talk about money, how to use it, and how to make more. In this video, I'm gonna talk about budgeting, what it should look like, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you a few personal tips of what I do personally in order to keep the budget on track. Again, it doesn't matter how much money you make, if you don't have a budget, you won't be financially free. Case in point, 70% of lottery winners go broke within five years. Why? because they don't know how to manage the money. Somebody who's grinded their way to $100 million knows what to do with $100 million because they've been there every step of the way. When you're handed a check and you're used to just swiping your card until it doesn't work anymore, you don't have the money management skills to maintain well. So how do you make a budget? Well, I'm a big fan of a budgeting method called the zero dollar budget. It's where you take every dollar that you plan to make in a month and you assign it a responsibility. This is my eating out money. This is my gasoline money. This is my getting my hair done money. Just kidding. More like this is my getting my hair done money. All right, that's enough of that. I'm sorry about that. So before the month begins, you write down how much money you expect to make and what you plan to do with it. Every single dollar. Every dollar has a purpose, an assignment, a responsibility. And then you stick to the plan. Your first couple months, if you're just starting budgeting, you're gonna be way off. You're gonna think you spend $200 on eating out and really you spend 750 because you just have no idea, you've never kept track, you've never been accountable to it. And that's okay, you're learning, great. You typically are gonna find out you spend more too much on food, you have miscellaneous shopping that you don't recognize, you're buying stuff you don't need, you're paying for services you don't really use. So if you're really trying to tighten the budget, scrape together an ounce of discipline and cut your lifestyle to what's important and what you really value. As far as the method of how you do it, you can do it on a notepad, you can do it on an Excel spreadsheet, there are plenty of software companies out there that provide platforms for you to do it personally. I use uh, Every Dollar, which is a part of the Dave Ramsey suite. That's what we personally use as a family. If it's your first budget, you've never done one before, or maybe you've done it, but you haven't done it well, do your first one on paper. Keep it basic for your first couple times, and then as you get used to it, as you get to, used to the process and building the discipline, then you can get a little bit more sophisticated. If you have trouble sticking to the budget, first make sure your numbers are realistic. If you're still having trouble beyond that, pull out cash and put cash in envelopes of the budget areas that you're having trouble with. Meaning that if you're continuously eating out over your uh, your food allowance or your food budget every month, put in the beginning of the month, pull out the cash, put the money in an envelope and mark it eating out money. Now, once the money's gone, the money's gone. You don't get to eat out anymore. Now, you don't have to do that for every line item. For example, your gas bill or you, your utility bills are probably relatively stable or at least seasonal. So you don't necessarily need cash for those, but the ones that you tend to go up and over on, just pull out cash, put it in an envelope. Also, if you find that you're spending more money than you actually make on a credit card, probably need to back off the credit card until you tighten up the discipline on the budget. If you're a habitual shopper, you can allow for that, but make sure you keep it in cash and don't go over the cash amount. But Brett, that sounds miserable. I work so hard so I can spend my money. Yes, this is restricting your lifestyle. This is called financial discipline. And it's hard. Do hard things. So I took one of our budgets. I took one just randomly from June 2018. So a couple years ago, it's currently March 2020. At the time, we were focused on getting out of debt. As I look at the budget, there's still a couple things that we can cut out. I wrote it down on a notepad. This is what your first starting budget should look like. Looking at this budget, we made $6,412 in after-tax income. That's my wife and I combined. We only gave $105, which as a percentage of our income and reflection on that, I'm not super happy about it, but that's what we did. That was what was realistic. We didn't save any money. We kept $1,000 in savings and that's all we had. We applied no money to savings. Our mortgage at the time was $19 hundred dollars here in Sacramento, California. Utilities were $357. Again, we're looking at the previous month to project the future month. That's kind of how you get the, the average of what your utilities are. Gas was $375. That's two commuters in California. Groceries was $700. We were a family of three at that time. Eating out was uh, $300. That's basically me going out to lunch uh, at work. Cell phones, $255. 
Lifestyle, we bundled together random miscellaneous things, $130. Insurance, car insurance, uh, life insurance, $296. Gym, $75. Medical expense, I had pneumonia at that time, so I ended up going to the ER because I was having breathing problems, so that was a $280 unforeseen expense. All of the rest of the money, $1,639, went to paying off debt. We had two car loans at the time. Even just looking at the budget now, after you know two more years of doing our personal budget and knowing our capability and what cuts we can make, I would cut eating out as luxury. I would cut the eating out to maybe a hundred bucks, you know, maybe a date night or two, and then you know a, a lunch if you forgot. Um, I bump the groceries to eight hundred, cut eating out to one hundred. I changed our phone plan. That was there was two phones on that plan. I'm not sure why that was so expensive. Probably save about thirty dollars there. We did end up cutting the gym membership. Uh, just we did, we went to the same gym, but we kind of cut. Uh, the what we have access to down so we cut that to twenty seven dollars saved about fifty bucks there of course your situation not identical to mine you have all different levels of factors so I'm gonna give you some recommended ratios of a general idea of where your budget items should fall your giving should be five to ten percent even if you're broke even if you're trying to get out of debt it's important to give it's important to be a generous person. It's important to give back to the world. Even when you're broke, even when the amount is little, it's important to exercise that muscle five to 10%. Savings, 10 to 15% of your monthly budget should go to saving, investing for the future once you're at a high interest debt. Housing expense, roughly 25 to 35% of your after-tax income should go to your housing expenses. Principal and interest, property taxes, insurance, 25 to 35% of your after-tax income. Utilities should be about 10%. Gas, 10%. Food, anywhere from 5 to 15% of your income. But in general, 5 to 15%. If you're single, you should be closer to 5. If you've got a big family, you're obviously closer to 15. Personal lifestyle, 10 to 15%. Insurance, 10 to 20%, and then debt, 5 to 10%, hopefully more if you're really tightening up the budget to try and get out of debt. Hopefully you can squeeze out more, um, but these are some realis realistic numbers. Now, keep in mind, the percentages, the ratios, they're just a guideline. Your numbers may be a little bit different. My gas and maintenance is around 5% of my budget, but my mortgage is around 35% of my budget. We live in California, so you'll have to adjust for your situation, but there's always room to cut. Now, as promised, some personal tips for what me and my wife do to stick to the budget, to stick to the plan. I mentioned this earlier, but use cash for areas that you tend to go over on. You go over in that area, you're done. Tip number two, do a mid-month checkup. Me and my wife get together uh, around the middle of the month. We do a mid-month checkup to see if we've blown the budget up in any area. Sometimes there are legitimate expenses that come up mid-month that you're not expecting. For example, I had pneumonia, I had to go to the, the hospital. Other times, uh, my wife is single-handedly trying to keep Amazon in business and is blowing up the budget that way. Tip number three, pay your debt, pay your, or do your savings or investing and do your giving first. Depending on where you're at in your financial situation, the tendency is to not pay, let's say, debts until they're due. And sometimes when you wait, what happens is, is you said you were going to pay $600 on your student loan, but now you're only going to pay $350 because you ate too much pizza. And so now your pizza is cutting into your long-term goals of what you want to accomplish because you're being undisciplined about your budget. But if you do it first, if you pay the $600 first, well, now you can't spend that money assuming you're not using a credit card. Pay the goals first, savings, investing, giving debt and then you're not compromising your goals because your lack of pizza discipline. Number four, work in a line item for your personal money to give you a little bit of flexibility. Nobody's perfect, but we put in a little bit of flexibility so we're not compromising on our long-term goals. My wife's name is Chrissy. We call her personal money Chrissy Cash. Number five, utilize sinking funds. Utilize sinking funds for a month where you know there are big expenses coming, like maybe you've got uh, both vehicle registrations due in the same month. That's gonna be a big expense. Or Christmas. There's nothing worse than falling on a budget all year long to then just stop and remember. Christmas is in 
December this year. And I have no money. Instead, start saving today so when Christmas comes, you have the money saved up for what you wanna spend on Christmas. If you're not sure how sinking funds work, you can Google it or you can check out sinking funds in my other videos. If you got something out of the video, please give it a like, please give it a, a subscribe, drop a comment of any videos you'd like to see next. Appreciate you guys, thank you so much.